Hello again. Uh, today what we're going to be talking about is colonial economy and specifically talking about triangular trade and the Middle Passage. Now a few key terms to keep in mind today are going to be import, export, favorable balance of trade, mercantilism, and the Navigation Act. So those are the five things that we're going to be focused on today. So the first economic principle we want to talk about today is import. Uh, imports are goods that are brought into a country that are made in another country. So this would be an example, the manufactured goods that the colonies were bringing from England into the 13 colonies. So this is any good that's made in another country that's brought into our own. The next is an export. So this is just the opposite. Uh, these are goods that are made in our country and shipped to other countries. So an example of this would be the raw materials that were being gathered and produced here in the 13 colonies and be a, being exported to Great Britain and around the world. So again, an import, uh, it's bringing something in. An export, it's exiting. It's leaving our country. Now, in economic terms, uh, there's a balance. There's a favorable balance of trade. So uh, when we think of the word balance, we think of things that are even. Um, in economic terms, we would want more exports than imports. So if we look down here at our graph, uh, we see a relationship between the United States and China. Uh, and I'm not quite sure how up to date this is, but just saw it and thought that it would be a good resource for us to use. Uh, you can see that the United States is exporting 81 billion dollars of items and then you see that uh, the United States is importing 344 billion dollars worth of uh, merchandise from China so does that mean the United States has a favorable balance of trade or does China have the favorable balance of trade right China is the one that has the favorable balance of trade not the United States because the United States is exporting uh, less than it's importing. China is the one that has the favorable balance of trade because they're exporting more than they're importing. Now when we talk about the 13 colonies uh, the United States is going to be um, well the 13 colonies are going to be like the United States here on our map where they were exporting less than they were importing from Great Britain and around the world. So Great Britain had the favorable balance of trade and not the 13 colonies. Okay, the next concept that we want to talk about is mercantilism. Now, this was an economic concept uh, that really stretched back quite a long ways. Um, we don't know of, of merc mercantilism today because we live under a system of capitalism. So capitalism actually took over uh, for mercantilism. But mercantilism is creating and maintaining wealth by carefully controlling trade. Uh, so back in the you know, 15, 16, 1700s, many countries controlled the trade of their colonies in order to create wealth for themselves. So Great Britain was controlling uh, the trade of the colonies. That way they could create and maintain wealth for themselves and not worry about the 13 colonies. Now, the question is, well, how did they control uh, the trade of the 13 colonies? And they did that through a series of acts or laws called the Navigation Acts. Uh, these were laws that were made by Great Britain uh, that stated the colonies could only trade with Great Britain. So that means uh, they could not go out and find the best price for their products. They were forced to sell to Great Britain only. So in our diagram below, you see a tobacco field. Uh, you see over on the far right, uh, this is a picture of France. Okay, but And here is Great Britain, the Navigation Acts, not allowing the colonies to directly trade with France. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal? They're still buying their product. That's true. But in this example, who is controlling the price of the product? And if you said Great Britain, you'd be absolutely correct. Great Britain is controlling the price because they're the only ones who are able to buy that product. So a farmer couldn't say, hey, 
I want uh, ten dollars for a bale of tobacco and Great Britain come back and say no we only want to pay eight well the colonial farmers would have very little say about this because who else are they going to sell it to if they don't sell it to Great Britain they're not going to sell it at all so mercantilism does not work well for those who are being controlled and in our case the colonists are the ones who are being controlled and we can see several problems coming to light from this example now uh, another way that they're able to control is through taxes or uh, duties. So taxes are duties or taxes on imported and exported items. Uh, and my example here is fish. So both fish are produced in North America in the colonies and in Great Britain. So when the New England region was exporting their fish to Great Britain, uh, Great Britain was trying to protect their own uh, merchants their own shipping industry uh, fishing industry rather uh, so what they would do is they would put a tax on the colonists fish so let's just say for an example that uh, this crate of fish cost five dollars so the um, the fish that were caught in England okay they cost five dollars however the fish that were caught in North America in New England and shipped over to Great Britain Britain put a duty on them so they put a tax of two dollars so this five dollar um, bucket of fish goes up in price by two dollars because of the tax and so always the tax gets put back on to the consumer the person who's buying the item so that raises the price to seven dollars so in order for the colonists to compete they would have to lower their price to three dollars so they would be losing two dollars that the English were actually making so this was very uh, inefficient for the colonial merchants and the fishermen uh, who had to work through these duties alright and our final one triangular trade uh, I'm sure that you've already heard about the triangular trade in the middle passage uh, it's a pattern of trade between England Africa and the American colonies and West Indies uh, the colonies were exporting the raw materials, the natural resources they were gathering, and they were bringing in the manufactured goods from around the world through Great Britain. So Great Britain was really acting as the middleman because, again, we couldn't go out and directly trade with any other country. So if we wanted something from a different country, we had to go directly through Great Britain, who in turn was you know, raising the price and making a profit on something that they weren't even making they were just reselling it to the United States alright so triangular trade in the middle passage what we're gonna actually do with this today is we're gonna have an assignment uh, there's a link on your Edmodo Walt for today where you're going to open it up and you're gonna create your own version of the triangular trade map now I already have several arrows pointing in the correct directions what I want you to do is I want you to research the triangular trade and figure out what exactly the items the major items that we were trading back and forth and go ahead and click each arrow and make a comment for each arrow to try to avoid any type of confusion with maybe some text box just go ahead and click on the arrow and make a comment uh, for what products are being shipped back and forth now as always if you have any questions please feel free to um, send me a message, a direct message on Edmodo or through the uh, Gary.org email system. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer those in a timely manner.